All right, what's going on there, folks? How's it going? It is the Earthmaster back here on this Thursday, Friday. For some of those out there, it is uh, January 21st, 25th, 2024. Uh, it is about 11.36 p.m. here, California time. Uh, latest activity looks like a 1.1 into the area of the West Coast, California area. Uh, starting off here on the big island of Hawaii. Uh, seen some slight uptick out here. Nothing major, but uh, a little bit of increasing activity out towards the Lohi Seamount. Uh, now, right now, nothing specific, but we are noticing just a little bit of uptick across that area. Of course, what goes on down below the area could have a subsequent effect on the volcanoes there towards the surface. Uh, as of right now, the volcano is currently not erupting. I'm just going to do a real quick glance here at the volcano update. We did this this morning, but just want to double check and uh, make sure that we got the right one. Not for sure what happened there. Which one did I go to? I went to the wrong one, it looks like. HVO, Kilauea Daily Update. Um, so, let's see here. Information statement. Okay, that was just about the uh, uh, network outage. But in terms of the daily update here, the volcano is currently not erupting there. Uh, let's check out the tilt meter because the tilt meter has a lot to do with what's going on underneath the ground there. Um, so we'll go over and check this out just real quick. See what's going on. I do have it bookmarked, but occasionally I do like to check out the uh, seismograph stations here on this chart. So as expected, I did mention this this morning. That by tonight we should see this thing start to go back up here and obviously that is the case right now not a huge spike up but it is um it looks like it's recovering back from that uh little small deflationary event there at the uh, kilauea volcano so um, past events here have shown us that there's a at least a day or so of a level or deflation event followed up by a larger inflation event so we should see this thing continue to rise up pri uh, higher than the uh, previous inflation level at the Kilauea Volcano. So we'll definitely uh, continue to watch it. Uh, earthquake activity there across the last 12 hours does show some movement. But uh, before any eruptive fissure activity opens up there across the Big Island, we will know about it. There'll be a lot of earthquake activity. Uh, minimal earthquake activity across the Pacific Northwest, West Coast areas. As far as California goes, well, um, that's about it. Uh, looks like we did have a 2.5 in the Reno area and also 2.8. Um, well, that says Bid Fort Bidwell, California, but that is way up here. So not for sure how they're getting that. Uh, either way, some activity stirring up out here um, today, but as you can see, not a whole lot of s severe activity. Uh, no major earthquakes out here across the west coast for now. Uh, Reno Sparks area getting a little bit of swarming going on here. Uh, just south of the Reno Sparks area. Looks like a couple twos and some smaller quakes. Now remember last month, I think it was back in December, we seen a little swarming um, north here. Right around the northern edge here of the Reno area. And uh, now we got some kicking up here in the south area. So... Obviously, um, strain out here against the plate boundary can move inland. Uh, always under strain out here across the North American plate. Uh, but for now, just uh, looks like a handful of smaller quakes out here on these little fault systems here south of Reno. Looking at the rest of the country here, uh, Texas, Oklahoma area, still seeing some movement. The latest quake here at 1.9. Uh, northern Oklahoma can't wait to get out there and do some storm chasing in the springtime I look forward to that uh, automatic status for a 1.9 out there but uh, nothing big all right uh, what else we got here globally uh, taking a look at the big picture here see if anything's standing out uh, New Zealand did see some activity earlier today with a 3.8 South Island area they've been somewhat uh, active out there recently so let's go see what's going on across the new zealand area uh 2.3 about an hour ago near taupo super volcano uh 2.8 north island there's that 3.8 down here six hours ago um south island area um looks like 
one person reported feeling that? Really? Only one person? Uh, 37 kilometers deep, that could be why. Uh, deeper quakes do not tend to uh, shake the upper levels too much. Uh, but as you can see, definitely a, a little bit of activity stirring up out here across North Island and South Island area over the last couple days. Of course, we did see that five-pointer a um, couple days ago there around North Island, but, uh, you know, it's there's just a little bit of activity stirring up out, out there. There's that 3.8 showing up actually quite nicely there on the South Island stations. But since then, doesn't look like a whole lot. But as always, just got to be prepared out there and uh, be on guard. Um, Indonesia Islands area, this was earlier this morning for a 5.6. Uh, let's go ahead and check out the uh, China area. Still seeing some activity up here where that larger quake struck here a couple days ago. Uh, total tally, let's see what we got here. About 69 earthquakes or so in the China area following that seven pointer. Very typical to see that many aftershocks. Um, but they are, it looks like the multitude of them are calming down slightly. Uh, let's see what else here. The Atlantic Ocean, one earthquake way out in the uh, Mid-Atlantic, near the Ascension Islands area, that's a 5.4. South America region, seeing some earthquake activity, uh, yeah, it looks like tonight, 4.6, 52 kilometers or so for that quake. Uh, let's check out Iceland here, where's my Iceland site here real quick, see what's going on out there, because we have seen a little bit of activity out there in the, uh, in the region. We did have a little bit of swarming out here. Um, along the rift zone boundary south of uh, Grindavik, uh, I think it was yesterday. Uh, now it looks like we're getting a little bit of activity north here across the northern area. And of course, in between, uh, still seeing some activity. So we'll keep an eye on that. Uh, and that does play a part on what goes on across uh, various volcanoes there. And more, more concerned about the Grindavik area where uh, there's not a whole lot of earthquake activity taking place there now. Uh, but let's go check out the 8-hour time series here. That will give us a good indicator of things are still building up below the surface. Maybe. Let's see here. Is it going to work? Are we frozen in time? Did they pull it? This is 8 hours. Ooh, ooh. I don't like it when it freezes up like that. We're still live. Still streaming. Uh, can't be reached for some reason. Not for sure what's going on. I don't think it's my internet. Well, because we're pretty quick. It's just this area, this these stations here. So um, let's see if the uh, Savart Singhi station is up and running. That station looks like it's down as well. Let me open up a different window here and see. Um, check out the four-hour run. Yeah, looks like the... Uh, well, that's not good, right? Need to be able to keep an eye on what's going on below the ground and, and there's no access to it, at least to the main stations here. All right, so we'll have to check back on that uh, tomorrow sometime. Uh, but for now, let's see, what else? Anything major going on up in Alaska? Not a whole lot, a handful of smaller quakes. Uh, looks like things have kind of died down here across the Aurora Lodge region. This this area has been swarming over the past few days. I, I think swarming is an understatement, right? Um, how's 400 earthquakes sound? 400 earthquakes, and it all uh, is from a 5.3. Goodness, that is crazy. That's a lot of aftershock activity for a, uh, a 5.3. Certain fault systems will produce more aftershock activity, depending on how much strain's built up out here. You know, so I get. I guess it's not super uncommon, but that's a lot. All right, uh, as you can see, there it's dying down a little bit here in the last 24 hours. Uh, not quite as uh, uh, active there across the region. All right, space weather activity here, real quick. Just going to keep this a little short. We do have a couple coronal holes that are facing the Earth, and uh, we'll keep an eye on those. They may enhance some uh, aurora conditions here in the days ahead. Uh, but as uh, far as the flaring goes, looking at a couple C flares, including a C1.1 right now. Uh, man, these sunspots travel really quickly here across the, um, the disk when they're active. 
a couple massive regions up here and one just well it won't be much it won't be visible that much here uh, as we head through the night and tomorrow that's uh, just about disappearing off the southwestern limb and we're left with clear clear conditions out here in terms of solar sunspots a couple active regions coming around the eastern limb um, they're unnamed I guess we'll get a better view of those in the days ahead right now 99% chance for a C flare M flare at 45 X flare around 10% chance and the aurora, aurora forecast fairly minimal not a whole lot of uh, not a whole lot of hope in terms of some strong flaring but uh, again we are into the uh, solar maximum um, and this is the old model here showing that the solar maximum should peak around 2025 uh, summertime but they have re revised the forecast so to speak to fit the current conditions and they're calling for um, solar maximum to peak sometime this year uh, in the months ahead all right uh, storm prediction center not a whole lot of severe weather right now it looks like maybe on day two current day two outlook which is saturday shows a slight risk for some severe weather across portions of the south with a tornado wind and hail event out there so just a heads up on that uh, numerical models here but keeping an eye on the west coast here uh, looking at potential of seeing some decent storms coming up here i'm sure you guys have been seeing it across social media talking about you know some major precipitation makers out here and you know it's uh it's looking likely that we'll uh, be in a wet pattern out here as we head into february even the GFS model is, is uh, pretty much in agreement. The uh, Let me check out what the total accumulated precipitation out there from the GFS model shows us. As you can see, this is just the overlay run going to about the February 11th time period. Look at California. They're fairly decent. Uh, even down in the Southern California, the brunt of the moisture is going to be way up north here. But um, I'll, take, uh, I'll take three to four inches of rainfall. It sounds pretty decent um the ecmwf model doesn't quite go as far it only goes to the uh, second it hasn't completed all of its loading times uh but even then it looks like uh these guys are forecasting some wet conditions as well um so that's good news i mean i'm you know february is supposed to be wet out here in california and that's what we are gonna get here it looks like um, the windy map. Let's see what we got for windy. Oh, what did I do with windy? I put it up here. Uh, shows roughly about the same thing. Let me go uh, check out the rain accumulation. Next five days or so. Oh, look at all this moisture up north, all along this area. If this was positioned just a little bit further east here, we would be in for a whopping of a storm. Uh, at least at least some decent precipitation out there uh, but this is the ECMWF model showing um, a couple inches out here in the next 10 days GFS model roughly about the same although a little bit more southward so we'll just kind of keep an eye on that and see uh, how these uh, storm systems play out here uh, in the meantime I am going to bed Hope everyone out there has a good night and uh, stay safe out there. A little bit of earthquake activity at Yellowstone. Let me see what we got going on here at Yellowstone real quick. Um, I think that activity is showing up here around the borehole or the promontory station. Uh, hard to say if that's earthquake activity or wind or ice or a combination of both. Uh, but really not a whole lot of earthquake activity they've done something to these stations over here around madison river um i don't know if they've amplified them or what it looks like they may be picking up some of the uh geyser activity i don't know but uh definitely not earthquake activity out here it looks fairly calm across the area and uh, for the most part all the other seismograph stations look fairly quiet as well have yourself a good night folks we're out of here We'll catch you guys back here tomorrow it's friday it is friday i might even barbecue tomorrow see you guys then take care